<laughs> Raymond Dunlap, I'm so glad to be able to interview you. Oh, right on, me too. Thanks a lot, Todd. We, I think, met probably 15 or 20 years ago, maybe, in Houston. <clears throat> I was, I'm sorry? Well, I was saying uh, there was this gallery, I think, called Blossom Street Art Gallery or something like that. Do you remember that? I do. It was 2010 when I first moved back from Osaka. So about 10 years. It feels like 15 oh. now. Yeah, okay. Feels like 15. Yeah, yeah, totally. I haven't seen you. We moved to California in hmm, hmm, 2011. No. Yeah, around 2011. So uh, I was uh, hoping to interview you. I, um, I'm creating a little library of people that are creative. And as you know, I like to... Uh, network and find out about what turns people into oh definitely art and why do they create and how they get involved and that type of stuff so um i feel like for you it would almost take like three or four interviews to really understand you because <laughs> you're a pretty cr complex guy um i see that you're always painting you're always doing uh you're always posting art a lot you do paintings i think in i do it i do I do it every day. It's, you know, I do it out of, out of it feels like necessity more than anything. Uh, yeah. It's more like a, it sounds probably cliche to sound like it's breathing, but just, it's just natural to get up in the morning and start working on something, you know, in between day jobs and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's just always been a really creative outlet. You know, for me, it's always been a way of, I guess, expressing yourself and also a little bit of escapism, maybe, you know, growing up in a small, Small town not, in East okay. Texas, Palestine, by the way. You know, there's a lot of time. Just a lot, yeah, there's a lot of downtime. You know, just not much, you know, yeah, but you know, you're out in the woods and doing stuff, but also you're always just drawing. You're always making things. And my mom and dad always had restaurants and stuff, so it's kind of like I wasn't helping them doing that. I was in the back room doing homework or drawing and painting. Mm -hmm. So it's always yeah. became very natural. Yeah. So um, your art, um, when you when you start a painting, is it kind of spontaneous, like what we call abstract expressionism, or do you do you plan a painting out before you start? You know, I I did. Um, I guess in my high school days, I would because you're in art class and you're you know you get a National Geographic or whatever, and you and I did plan them out. And then I guess after I moved to Tokyo, it just started. I don't know what happened. It just like overwhelming static electricity you know you've been in asia before and it's just like wow so then i stopped i was very spontaneous and i was doing like three or four days so i want to plan them out i have an idea of the series that i'm making mm -hmm. but i don't know how it's going to really turn out until i start really getting into it gotcha but i do try and plan them out but usually it changes like 15 to 20 times so i'm like okay but I do have a base. I do try and draw down a little bit and like have. Yeah. Yeah. You seem to have uh, themes kind of um, uh -huh. what, what you call, or at least what I'm familiar with, what you paint kind of totems or things that are uh, related to your time in Japan or, or related perhaps to the Japanese culture. A lot of it is. It's a lot of Tex-Mex. Uh, ironic enough, you know, when I moved over there, I was painting a lot of Texas scenes. And some reason I started getting into Texas history more, maybe out of homesickness. But now, after moving back, I see myself getting the more like the Zen type, you know, temples and stuff, kind of like the, the shapes and the figures and things like that. So, and you yeah. do a lot of work on um, canvas, uh, canvas itself without being stretched. Do you ever take some of your paintings and then then put them onto a stretch, a stretcher or? I either they're already on the canvas stretched or they're on wood. No, I never, I, I'm going to start doing that. I actually have one I'm doing for a show next month. Want to see it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <clears throat> I was hoping you'd be able to show some art. This is my chair, a, a, a chair with a painting on top of it. So <laughs> we'll just do that real quick. But, uh, yeah, so. This is for a counter. It's on a, it's a spicy by spicy. It's on a painter's cart. Yeah. And 
Nice. I'm gonna stretch. I wanted to just put this directly in the wall in the, in the gallery. The creators like we'd like for you to uh, have it more, uh, not just limp. they wanted me to stretch it on camera. So I'm gonna put this on some stretcher boards, or I'm gonna get a piece of bamboo and make it like a scroll. That's nice. That that reminds me of some artist. I can't think of the name, but it looks really great. Oh, thanks a lot. You know, that's one of the things too. Is the artists are kind of like, well, oh, you know, you don't want to like, you know, try and look like someone sometimes. But again, it's like it's all music and just how you hear it and how you, you know, elaborate it. You know, but the create the creativity is all just like a music. Yeah. And you hear it. And you hear it. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, it just depends. It just depends how you, you know, you interpret it. But um. I, I, I have this theory, Ray, that maybe some of us are born with uh, maybe in our brains that that viewing a piece of art really turns our brains on. Um, like we react to color and design. And I think that might be the way for me because I've always when I ever since I was a kid, when I go to a museum, it would just get me all psyched up. I just feel, wow, this is amazing. Um, is it that way for you too? I mean, like, uh, you really enjoy looking at art and studying art and all that? Yeah, you know, I go through spells. I go through spells where I do and then I don't. But right now I'm really observing a lot more art than I usually am. But uh, mm. growing up, growing up, I, did, I didn't go to my, I didn't go to a real museum. So I was like 21 in Tokyo. So you would just see art that was on people's walls, you know, like the, the you know, the Velvet Jesus and stuff like that, or you know, very folk art stuff that people are ambulance or um, ambulance and things like that people would have on their barns and stuff. But we talk about being stimulated. For me, it was probably more music for mm. me that was more stimulating than art at, at that time. When I knew I wanted to be an artist, like around eight or nine, I'm like, man, I wanted to be an artist. But for me, it was just something that was so natural that I had to see other things to understand yeah. what I was doing. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. I, I, that's a pretty young age to know that you want to be an artist, but I, I could definitely appreciate that. Um, do you still like, do you use music to, when you're painting now, to inspire you? I, you know, I do um, not, not as much. Uh, I try and I actually, now I try and keep it as quiet as possible, but of course, you know, put on some jazz or put on some of my favorite bands um, like Sparkle Horse and really get into it. Um, but then I, I have still a lot of mind chatter. So sometimes the music would take me down different rabbit holes. So I'm like, I already have enough going on already without that. Yeah. So I just sit in a room kind of like now and just kind of, you know, kind of quiet and have my candle burning and just <laughs> stillness. And here's, so, another thing, here's another thing that I, I've, I've learned in uh -huh. watching you over the years that when you post a piece of art, say like on Facebook or somewhere, mm -hmm. it's, ne it's never just the art. You, you, always oh. attach, you always attach a little poem, a very cryptic poem. The poems. Uh, yeah, like, um, and, and sometimes it's, I can't understand it. It's a bit of a jumble of words, but other times it's, wow, that's pretty deep, right? And so where do you, where do you come up with the poetry? Oh, <clears throat> Sometimes, to be honest, it's just people's conversations that I'll overhear and I'll just ad lib to it. But a lot of times it's just, well, a lot of times I just ad lib to overhearing conversations or things like that and think it's funny or weird. But there's also the times when I'm just sitting there and I just hear this overwhelming like vibration, like, you know, like this one here is uh, like, you know, something like, so now I'll write them down, Todd. I've been writing them down in this instead of just oh. throwing them out there. Yeah. So, it's like this one here. They they blow whistles to scare away the last voyages. They're waiting for you to be drunk. Now they're coming back two languages. It's just, and then I translate into I'm translating them into Japanese now. So uh, cool. it is cool. So. Yeah. A lot of those, a lot are just, they're just like the paintings. They're just a lot of mumble jumbo. It sounds, it sounds, sometimes it sounds cool and sometimes it doesn't. That's pretty much all it is, Todd. There's no mystery behind it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so I have another question then. So, uh, yeah, you, I know you did spend, I don't know how many years in Japan, but what, 
how did you decide to go to Japan? Oh, it's been like it's 15 years there. I was working with the EPA. Um, and before that, I had a scholarship to go to Stephen F. Austin for art uh, by semi scholarship, but I was going to go for art and uh, ended up going with the EPA. And I'd go, I went over there on vacation and I just fell in love with it, Todd. I knew I was going to be an artist, but I said, well, I'm not sure if I can do this. And I, sh I wasn't sure if I could move to New York and just be what they call a starving artist. That didn't sound fun, you know? And so, but I thought it'd be okay if I did it in Japan. Mm. And so, yeah, I ended up going over there for about three or four weeks and then uh, ended up moving back over there and got a job uh, in various things and started working for a company called Golden artist yeah. colors yeah and uh, i remember that that was after about my fourth or fifth year living there and after that i did that for the rest and i worked for like uh trading companies and did translations but the main thing i went over there for um if you really want to know is growing up growing up i hated god i hated all i hated christianity i hated all that to be honest with you and i never really told anyone that that's funny mm -hmm. and so when i heard there was no like real god in japan i thought that's where i need to be I was like 19, 20. I'm like, this, I'm tired of this, what I, what I grew up with. And so I went over there and I found out that there is, you know, certain things. And, um, but it made me grow up in a, it made me learn things that, that I wasn't going to be able to learn in America. You know, I was, I was very maybe pampered living in America. And yeah. I didn't, it was, yeah, it was either sink or swim type of, because I moved over there with a one way ticket. Yeah. And uh, so, Bold Maybe moves, up. bold moves that young men make like that. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Years. Well, yeah, exactly. Takes, you know, takes some courage to do something like that. You know, now it'd probably be like, oh, he he should have had some lithium or whatever, you know. But at the time, <laughs> yeah, oh, that was a lithium move. Like, no, but at the yeah, that courage definitely, yeah, something like that. Yeah. But no regrets. I would do it again. Uh, you know, learn the language, and it definitely was a big part of, uh, you know, just part of growing and learning yeah. things so now you've that, been in now you've been in answer your question for, i'm sorry yeah yeah no i i think i'm just trying to gain some insight um yeah so like like i said i i know some some about you but i don't know a lot about you <laughs> oh yeah uh, ask me I mean, anything we, Todd. i remember we attended some art parties you invited me to something in houston one time up in the an artist loft that was probably a show and you were doing some performance art yeah, I was. Yeah. So do you do you consider performance art something that you're still into? Oh, actually, did I did one yesterday? It's even more so, especially this time of year. It was a solace. It's just it's like this. It's part of it. So yesterday I did one. Uh, actually, the canvas I just showed you that was part of performance art, performance piece I did at the Vanille. But yeah, I I enjoy both of them. But then I was sitting there and I heard a, you know, I heard a voice say, like, is this, is this, is this a painting or is this a performance? Mm. I'm like, well, it's performance. I said, well, then don't think it's a painting. So I was kind of battling with it yesterday. I'm glad you asked mm. that. I'm like, well, it's a performance painting. That makes sense. So that's yeah. what it is, performance painting. But I love doing performance, especially like with fire and water and all the elements and yeah. tying them all in together. I really enjoy that. Yeah, I remember watching that and it was impressive to kind of immerse ourselves and and get that feel of what you were trying to create there. Um, I found it very interesting. Oh, thanks a lot. I had a good time. To, which one was it? Was it the one downtown when I had like on the NASA suit or? No, it, it was. I've seen the pictures from that, uh -huh. uh, but it, it wasn't that time. Okay. You, had, uh, you were wearing something else, but um, <laughs> I forget. <laughs> but uh Anyway, so so that's great. So now you're in Houston, and um, art is your life, and you're you're going to what directions are you? Do you see yourself heading with art? Uh, I'm taking it more. I'm more. Uh, I guess I'm more concerned now. What kind of message I'm really trying to put out there? Mm. Before it was just kind of like I was trying to save myself, and now I'm like, well, that was kind of selfish. So more putting out a point, and I'm sure I'm not the only person that feels certain things that I feel. So putting those symbols, those that energetic energy into the paintings, and hopefully it, it inspires people. 
Yeah. And I was thinking about like, what do you question I ask myself today? What do you want your your art to be like? And then, well, I want it to be like this and this. I'm like, that's really nothing. And I'm like, I want it to be like gospel music. That's how I want it to be, you know. And it's like it's either whoa, but it takes you somewhere, you know. And that's how I want my art to be like gospel like, music. Like like leaving a lasting impact on somebody, like hits them hits them right in the heart. Yeah, exactly how I want it to be. You know, and it can like anything. People take it however they are in their lives, but that's how I want it to be. Like, you know, they're totem poles. They're like walking totem poles, totem poles. But uh, yeah, kind of. I want people to go in there and experience it and really feel, you know. Oh. I, I want it to be more meditative than. I want it to be more meditative, and like more like gospel music. Interesting. Well, I find it very interesting. Um, and let's definitely stay in touch and um, maybe we'll do this again. I'm trying to keep the video somewhat short because I know people don't generally oh, okay. click on really long videos. So I'm trying oh, to exactly. And great, there were great impactful. questions. Yeah, well, we could do it again. As I learned, this is just my second interview. <laughs> oh, you did a great job. You look fantastic, I'm man. I'm going to do, I'm hopefully going to do dozens and dozens and many, many interviews, but um, yeah, I'm just starting out. So uh, I appreciate you jumping in the queue and giving me the time to talk. And it's great oh, seeing you again. Oh, you too, Ty. You're looking great. And uh, I really enjoy seeing your posts and uh, we'll stay in touch. And if you ever come to LA or we got an extra bedroom, you can hang out and, you know, do Very whatever. cool, man. Thank you so much todd you ever play any plans coming this way oh i might but uh none, none yet <laughs> got, kind of got pandemic going on right but, right on man well thanks todd all right thank you ray take care let me yes, turn sir. off this video okay thank you ray you're welcome <laughs>